Adam White with Front Office Sports here for another episode of Shot Callers, and we're joined by Elisa Padilla, the SVP of Marketing and Community Relations here with the Miami Marlins. And Elisa, marketing for the Marlins, it's a, it's a big challenge for you, but an awesome one. We're just coming off your new Arcaloris campaign, a whole new rebrand. Talk to me about what it's been like for the last you know few months, if not even just leading into that. Yeah, so thank you, first of all, very much for having me. Um, we are really excited about what we're building here in Miami. I've been with the organization for nine months. So when I came in, the logo, color palette, jerseys, everything was already designed. My job when I came in was to how we were was to think through how we were going to launch the brand. And we one of the things that's really important to us is that we infuse the fabric of this brand into the community. So when we started thinking about, okay, how are we going to launch this? How are we going to launch this? We put together a comprehensive 360 marketing campaign because we wanted, the day that we launched this new brand, our goal was to be where people live, work, and play. Um, so on November 16th, um, we had a town hall meeting with our employees and we walked them through the inspiration of the colors, of where the colors came from. Um, the ownership group worked very closely with MLB and you know we were excited to show our the team first, our Caliente Red, our Miami Blue, our Midnight Black, and our Slate Gray, right? Those are colors, vibrant colors that you see all over Miami. You live those colors every single day. And um, we had a town hall, we launched the, the brand on social media. Um, it was actually really, really neat because as a group collectively, we counted down um, and the video launched at 3.46 p.m. Oh, wow, I um, even so remember that, this yes. visit to, to the day. <laughs> so that was very excited. That was very exciting. And then the next day when people woke up, they saw our murals sprinkled throughout Miami and key neighborhoods for us. They saw Out of Home, they saw us on TV, they heard us on the radio. It was our day to say, we're here, we're your new team, um, and we're excited to be part of the community. And from your standpoint, you know, owning that art Caloris, how important was that in a place where Miami, where you have transplants, you have, uh, you know, multiple different cultures, you have a vibrant Latin population. Like, how important was it from owning that from the out of home to just even what well, you mentioned that your employees, from their, you know, the heart of what they do, know that this is what they're all about? Yeah, I, well, look, I think that when you look at Miami and you look at the diversity and the richness that's here, and when you look at our new logo and our new brand positioning, yeah. we want to be one with the community. We want to be one with this city and own our colores is about us not us meaning the miami marlins it's about us miami as a community because you live those colors every single day and what's really beautiful about the new brand is that it's very contemporary it's fat it's very stylish it's very forward thinking so when we think about Miami and you think about, you know, what what the culture is here, we want to be more than just your baseball team. We want to be a place where you can come and you can enjoy a night out of entertainment and we want to become part of your lifestyle. We want to be top of mind. And from the the brand and the launch and what we've done to date has been, you know, we're, we're on track, yeah, we're on track. Yeah, I can't get mad about yeah. that. And, you know, speaking of branding and launching, you know, most people maybe have the opportunity to do that once in their career. You've now done it twice, right? With the Brooklyn Nets, I uh, was changing from New Jersey to Brooklyn, and now with the Marlins. What were you able to kind of take away from that experience with the Nets that you brought to this and, and were kind of like, you know, it's, it's a transformational opportunity from an organizational standpoint. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because both, both experiences are very different yet the same because what we're doing is changing consumer perception, right? So with the Nets, it was, you know, the Nets were moving from New Jersey to Brooklyn. That was a whole different dynamic here. For us, it was about, we're, you know, we're 26 years old, we're a 26 year old franchise. You know, we have a history and this is about moving forward. This is about the future. And this brand identity and the brand positioning was just the beginning of that. Um, so, you know, the logo change, the ballpark enhancements, the cut, like everything that we have done is, is to demonstrate that it's a new day here in Miami 
for us, for the team, and also for our fans. And from that standpoint too, I know that there's been a lot of talk about trust and building back up trust and organizational trust from a brand perspective and, and making that kind of come out. Is, is that really what you guys have wanted to exude from that Arca Loris thing? It was like, you know, we're part of the fabric of the community. You can trust us because we are part of, we're, we're you. We have to demonstrate and be authentic in our approach. And if we sit and if part of our mission statement is to be to infuse the fabric of our brand into the community, we need to demonstrate that. So could just a couple quick examples. One is, you know, the art program where we did seven murals in key locations. So that we were very diligent about that process. We were very diligent. We know how street art is very prevalent here in Miami. We want, that's showing that, hey, we're cool, we're hip, we're gonna be part of your community. Yeah. Um, the day after we launched on, on November 16th, we did surprise and delights. So from eight o'clock in the morning, all the way through three o'clock in the afternoon, we had our players, we had our alumni, we had our executives out in key communities be, being, you know, serving coffee, handing out um, ball caps um, with the new logo, being part of everyday lives. And I think that that's how, they're, that's how the community is gonna earn our trust. We're not saying that it's gonna be easy, but we're going to take the steps and demonstrate that we are taking the right steps to earn that trust back. And for you guys, that's obviously, and it comes from an investment from the community relations yeah. side, and obviously that's part of your role too. How has you, you know, have kind of, as now you've been here nine months, what has that shift from a community relations standpoint been like, and especially as you build the brand with that community relations yeah. standpoint? Well, I think that the, the one thing that we're all passionate about is building this brand from the ground up and doing it the right way from a grassroots level perspective. So when I came in, we had an outreach program, we had an outreach department, um, and then our foundation sat in a different department. And what we did was we did an evaluation and we created a youth baseball softball department. Um, and that department, their sole purpose it w is to promote youth baseball and softball in Miami. And we thought, okay, how are we gonna do this? You know, we know that that youth baseball, you know, you have the traveling teams, that there's like all this competition, you know, at the teen tween level. And we were in a meeting and we started talking about T-ball, about little guys, right? But four or five year olds, I'm like, well, why don't we own T-ball? Like, let's go out there, sign up T-ball teams, and we will outfit them from head to toe you know, we'll give them caps, we'll give them t-shirts. And the team was charged with signing up 100 um, T-ball teams. They overproduced, so we have 136 teams that are Miami Marlins, and it's been the greatest thing. And when, when um, T-ball season kicked off, we worked with our internal um, player relations department, and we had our our players at a lot of the kickoff um, games. So again, being part of the community, these you know what these little kids are four or five years old. They love the sport of baseball, and we're, that is our approach in saying we're here. We want to be present in the community, and these are our future fans. Yeah, and then for a marketing standpoint, I guess this might be a little bit more of a fun question. What's like some things you kind of want to see your team accomplish? Is there any goals that you want to have, like an influencer wearing a Marlins jersey or something like that? What's kind of on the the goal roadmap that if you could say without giving too much of the secrets? Yeah. Also, <laughs> uh, that you could say, I would love to see this happen this year or next year. What are you guys kind of like planning out from that standpoint? But here's here's what I can tell you. So I've already said it three times, right? Having 37,000 people yeah. in the ballpark is, that would be like the number one dream. Yeah. I think the second is that when there is a celebrity that comes to town that they and we're playing, that they say, I want to go to Marlins Park. I want to have, you know, here on like basketball, you know, um, in basketball you have your feet, you know, on the wood. Here, you know, you'll have... You could sit behind home plate. <laughs> but that to me, because when you when you go beyond sport and you, you bleed into entertainment and lifestyle, that's where, you know, that's where people start taking notice and start looking at you differently, like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting, you know? So um, I think that that would be another, um, another wish of mine.